In this video we're going to have a look at ratios. So here's page one, these examples. And here's page two, and we'll do these examples. Okay, finishing up with finding the ratio of, of shaded to non-shaded squares and so on here, right? Okay, so let's start. A ratio can be written with the word two. It can also be written as a fraction. Well, in fact, there's another way of writing a ratio. Five to ten, you might have seen written like this, five with a colon, ten. I don't know if you've ever seen that. But that's another way of writing a ratio. Um, anyway, but w what we need to understand is that five to ten can be written as a fraction in this form. Five over ten. And what we like to do is write it as a fraction, then put it in lowest terms, and then write it with a, the word two again, you know? Um, just for fun, I guess. So five over 10, and then we go put it in lowest terms. So what does that become in lowest terms? Five to five goes once, five to 10 goes twice, right? And we get one over two, and that is the same thing as 5 to 10, 1 over 2, and that can also be written 1, 2, 1 to 2, right? So it's kind of like if there were five, um, five um, boys in a classroom to every 10 girls, that means that there's one boy to every two girls. Does that make sense? So 5 to 10 is the same thing as saying 1 to 2. There's two girls for every one boy, or there's one boy to every two girls. Same way as there's five boys to every ten girls, right? Six to four. Write this as a fraction first of all. Put it in lowest terms and then see what you get. Six to four is the same thing as six over four. So this is the ratio and written as a fraction, it's six over four. Put that fraction in lowest terms. And what do you get? Two into six goes three times. Two into four goes twice. So do we get three over two? Okay, and that's the answer, three over two, right? Which is the same thing as three to two, right? So if there were six boys for every four girls in the classroom, that's six to two, but you could also say there's three boys for every two girls, right? Um, one hundred to two thousand five hundred. Okay, write that as a fraction first of all. One hundred to two thousand five hundred is one hundred over two thousand five hundred, and put that in lowest terms. Now let me show you a kind of a trick. You could divide the top by 10, right, for example. If you divide the top by 10, 100 over 10 is 10, and so in other words you just cross off a zero. And then you can divide the bottom by 10, and that would cross the zero off, right? And then you could divide them by 10 again. 10 divided by 10 is 1, so cross off a zero, and that's 1. And divide this fellow by 10, and you can cross off this zero. Or you could think, look, I just divided the top and bottom by 100. And you're left with 1 over 25, right? Which is the answer. 1 over 25. Uh, or you could say 1 to 25. So if, um, if you had a... Um, if you're looking at uh, the amount of calories a person uh, took in a day, and let's say a hundred calories came from uh, fat, you would say that their uh, calorie intake was a hundred to twenty-five hundred would be the ratio of calories from uh, fat to total calories they took in that day, and that's the same as one to twenty-five. One calorie of fat for every twenty-five calories consumed in a day, let's say, or, or half a day or whatever, <laughs> or consumed by a, by a dog or something like that, whatever, right? Now, two and a half to one quarter. We're going to write it as a fraction, 
and then we're going to put the fraction in lowest terms. Okay. So we're going to have to remember how to do complex fractions here because this be this looks like this. Watch. Two and one half over one quarter. Okay. Do you remember how to simplify complex fractions? The first step is to turn everything to make sure you have one fraction divided by another fraction. So you've got to turn this mixed number on the top into an improper fraction. Okay? So go ahead and do that. And by the way, if you're finding things easy, by all means go ahead and do the rest of the examples. Okay? So two times two is four, four plus one is five. We have five over two divided by one quarter, right? So what you need to look at this as is this is this fraction divided by this fraction. And we can write it in this way. 5 over 2 divided by 1 over 4. Right? Because it's this guy divided by this guy. And then go ahead and uh, calculate that. Well isn't that 5 over 2 multiplied by the reciprocal of the fraction on the right. So don't you flip him upside down? 4 over 1. And when you're multiplying fractions you're allowed to cross cancel common factors. So go ahead and cross cancel common factors if you can. 2 to 2 goes once, 2 into 4 goes twice. And what's the answer? 5 times 2 is 10. 1 times 1 is 1. 10 over 1. Now, because we were dealing with ratios, and we're writing ratios in fraction form, I will not simplify that to 10. I will not do that. Why? Because it doesn't make sense if you're talking about ratios. You have to leave it in this form. Because this might represent something like for a recipe for um, a pancake okay it would it might be two and a half cups of flour to one quarter cups of sugar okay so this could represent the cups of flour and this could represent cups of sugar and we want to might know how much flour to sugar is what what is the ratio of flour to sugar how much more flour is there than sugar, right? If I calculate this fella, I get 10 over 1. And you see, I put the flour, the 9 to 2 and a half of flour over the 1 quarter of sugar. And that calculates to be 10 over 1. Now 10 represents flour, and 1 represents sugar. So my answer is 10 parts flour for every 1 part sugar. In other words, you could make a big batch with 10 cups of flour and one cup of sugar. You could make a little pancake, or you could make one pancake with 10 tablespoons of flour and one tablespoon of sugar. Because you have the ratio simplified now as 10 to 1. But you don't just write that 10, because then your sugar part gets completely lost. Do you see what I'm trying to say? You have to have the one on the bottom when you're writing these ratios. And you'll see the answers in the back of the textbook. They require you to write like that. Okay? Anyway, let's figure this guy out. One third to two and a quarter. So imagine, again, we were making a pancake, and that's one third cups of sugar to every two and a quarter cups of flour. So I want to know how much sugar to flour do I really need? Uh, you know, simplify in a simplified version. So one third over two and a quarter is what we start with, right? Because the two gets replaced with a fraction bar. Now simplify that. What do you have to do with that mixed number there? Well, the third stays there, doesn't it? And it's divided by. What's this as a mixed number? 4 times 2? <coughs> 8 and 8 plus 1? 9. So 9 over 4, right? So what we have is 1 quarter divided by 9 fourths. And we need to write it like that. One, or sorry, 1 third, not 1 quarter. 1 third divided by 
nine fourths, isn't it? So go ahead and um, go ahead and figure that guy out. Can you cross cancel here? No, because you're dividing. You can't cross cancel when you're dividing. You have to be multiplied. So that's going to be one third multiplied by what? Multiplied by the reciprocal four over nine. What does that make? Can you cross cancel anything? Nope. One times four is four. Three times nine is twenty-seven. Okay. So we get four to twenty-seven, or four over twenty-seven. Now we started with a third cup of sugar for every two and a quarter cups of flour. We simplified it all the way to here, and that is four parts sugar for every twenty-seven parts flour. That is the kind of exact measurement of sugar to flour. You know, four parts sugar. So, so you could make a big batch of pancakes with four cups of sugar and twenty-seven cups of flour, or you could have four tablespoons of sugar, twenty-seven cups of flour. But this ratio, four to twenty-seven, is the same thing as one third to two and a quarter. That's what you found out, right? And you just leave your answer like that: four over twenty-seven. You can write 4 to 27, but the back of the book and the quizzes aren't going to want you to do that. So you can just leave it like this, right? Anyway. Okay, five, quarter, five and a quarter to one and three quarters. Write that as a fraction, and as we've been doing, and then go ahead and simplify it. Okay? So please press pause, do this whole thing by yourself, then I'll do it. Press pause, do the whole thing, then I'll do it. I'm going to do it now in about three seconds. Hope you've tried it. Three, two, one. Okay, here I go. Five quarters, five and a quarter to one and three quarters. Five and one quarter to one and three quarters equals. Got to put these as improper fractions. Four times five is twenty. Twenty plus one, twenty-one over four. All over. Four times one is four, and four and three is seven. Seven over four, right? So that is twenty-one over four divided by divided by the bottom 7 over 4 which is 21 over 4 multiplied by the reciprocal 4 over 7 did you figure out what could cross cancel there the fours 4 into 4 goes once here and here and about 7 and 21 7 into 7 goes once 7 and 21 goes three times so this simplifies nicely. 3 times 1 is 3. 1 times 1 is 1. The answer is 3 over 1. Did you write down 3? You're not supposed to, when we're dealing with ratios, we're not supposed to go to there. Because I want both, you know, I, I need the answer as a ratio. 3 to 1. That's what that's saying. 3 to 1. Okay? 3 over 1. 3 to 1. So we don't just want the number three in its own. I actually want to leave it like that. Okay. So if if it was once again if it was something like five and a quarter cups of flour to one and three quarter cups of sugar, the flour on the top, sugar on the bottom, would be, that would be the same thing as three cups of flour to one cup of sugar, right? So you 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 got three parts flour, one part sugar, right? Okay, these guys, 0 0.04 to 0 0.16, you would write that as a fraction first. You would um, put the fraction in low, you know, calculate that, I guess, divide. And um, y you might remember, you might memorize, it's, okay, it's this into this, right? So we've got... Uh, where do I do it? Over where do I do it? over here? 0 0.16 into 0 0.04. You might remember that we have to put the decimal point one two spaces to the right in both numbers, so we get 16 into four, right? And then we try to calculate that. Now, if I calculate that. Point zero zero. I end up getting 
zero point two five, right? Which that doesn't help me. That is the answer, but I want that as a ratio, you no? Know? So I guess you could figure it out from there because zero point two five is twenty five over a hundred and you could break that down. That ends up being one over four, which is the answer. But what I'm thinking is, and I hope you might think this isn't such a bad idea. If you see, I have hundredths here. I'm dealing with four hundredths on the top and sixteen hundredths at the bottom. Now, what happens if I multiply the top and bottom by a hundred? You see, that might be the easiest way to deal with these guys. See, if I multiply this by a hundred, doesn't the decimal point go two spaces to the right? Because, because it's kind of like four cents times a hundred is four dollars. Sixteen cents times a hundred, the decimal point goes two spaces to the right, and I get sixteen, right? And now you can just simplify that fella. Four into four goes once. Four into sixteen goes four times. So one over four, right? Now press pause and try this on your own. Zero point three five. 0 0.05 okay I'll do it now it's you gotta have 0 0.35 over 0 0.05 and once again it might be an idea to multiply the top and bottom by a hundred to get an equivalent fraction okay because if I multiply 0 0.05 by a hundred that's five hundredths if I multiply it by a hundred the decimal point goes two spaces over, and I get five on the bottom. If I multiply the top by a hundred, decimal space goes two places over, and I get thirty-five up here. What does that become? And we have to have it in ratio form, as a as a ratio. So five to five goes once, five into that goes seven times, right? So we get seven over one, or seven to one. So that's you need to leave it like that. Seven over one. Don't write it as seven you want it in ratio form, right? Now let's have a look at these guys. We've got this rectangle here. Some of the squares are shaded, some are not. Find the ratio of shaded to non-shaded squares. How many are red squares, but how many uh, squares do we have colored in shaded? One, two, three, four, five. So this, that would then be five to how many? Non-shaded. Let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3. That's 12 plus 1, 13. Right? Or you can count them out. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. 5 to 13. And write that as a fraction. 5 over 13. Now, put that in lowest terms. It's already in lowest terms, isn't it? You can't break that down any further, so you're done. Yep. How about the ratio of shaded squares to total squares? How many shaded squares? One, two, three, four, five. Two total squares. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six times three, isn't it? Six times three is eighteen, isn't it? So we've got eighteen squares. Whoops. That gives me 5 over 18. Put that in lowest terms? You can't in this case. You might have more examples where you do put them in lowest terms, I would say. Can you press pause and do this one? Find the ratio of non-shaded squares to total squares. Write down the answer. Find the ratio of non-shaded squares to total squares. Non-shaded. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, that's twelve and one thirteen. Two total squares. Six times three, eighteen. So that gives me thirteen over eighteen, and it doesn't go in those terms again.